go to the view menu in Affinity Photo and show grid. Now grids are great for aligning things and creating shapes and much, much more. So this grid is really useful. If you want to remove it, just go to view and show grid and do it again. No, that doesn't seem very logical. However, grid and access manager, that's where it controls all of the various settings. Now by default, it goes to automatic. If you've used it, it will go into what you're using. So if you've been using advanced and you go back into it again, it will be in advanced. It won't be in automatic. But automatic is the default position. And you can't access the values there. You'll notice the value says zero and one. Well, clearly it isn't. It, it doesn't give you, allow you to do anything you've got there. The only thing you can change down here, you can just modify the grid lines. You can make C, those are the grid lines, those are the thicker lines there. You can't change the thickness of the lines, which is a pity, I think. It'd be nice if you could change those a bit as well. And subdivision lines. You can change the colors. So you can click there and you can turn around and say make them orange. You, or just keep them black. Up to you. But you've got a whole range of different colors that you can use for those. You can't use gradients, that would be nice. Subdivision lines. These are the subdivision lines. These ones in between, the, the, there's five of them by default. And you can modify that and you can set them to make it look like it's they're all the same. Actually, it's quite painful to look at. So I'm just going to reduce that down. You can remove them. If you don't want them, just put that down to zero. Then, of course, you can close it if that's what you want. However, you can also save presets. Now, of course, automatic, there is no preset for that because you've got a preset already. But you can create a preset for your settings. So if you create something, it is odd that it doesn't allow you to save a preset for just for this part but it doesn't. And you've got option here for show grid or not, which is nice, a nicety. Basic, you've also got another option here, show access editing handles. I must admit, I wish, and I've never worked out what on earth that does, because nothing seems to change to my mind there. However, I'm certain someone will put in the comments below that there is something different, but I'm not certain what is. Right, what you can now do is you can change the spacing. So if you don't want 64, and that's that was the default, 64, you can go for something more. You can go for 200. So 200, you've got then, obviously I've got a document about 2000 odd. It's not perfect, so it doesn't actually match exactly. But however, if you say you've got a document of 1000 by 1000, you can just enter 1000 and then say divide by five. So you can put mathematicals in there as well. You can just go mathematical and it just work it out for you, 200, which obviously it is. Also, you can again change the number of divisions. Before you, it was set to five. Now this time you can say, oh, I want two. However, as it's obviously faded, you couldn't see it. But if I just increase the subdivision. Now divisions, subdivisions, not certain why they didn't keep consistent name, but they haven't. They've gone for divisions there and subdivisions there. There must be a reason. However, just fade it away there and you can see that's two there. So you've got Nice little grid there. Maybe useful if that's what you want. However, most of the time I keep it in advance. So advanced because the thing is you can then access a whole lot more. Now the grid types basically are all the same, even though superficially they look like they're different. But basically all they do is give access to certain different settings here. So create plane set will become available or not depending which one you select. So you can just go for standard, Isometric, if I select that, you can see it just changes. You get this isometric one, which is nice, but you can see the settings in the axis, the second and up axis. You get these, you've got this first axis. That's always available. First axis, don't think there's any that are not with the first axis. That would be odd if it didn't. However, what you can do, I'm just gonna keep it with standard there for now. And you can just turn this uniform off if you want to make some slight different change. So. Straight away, you can see you've got access to the second access. So with that, that means you can enter, say 200 there. Well, I, I want it to be 20. I don't want it, I want it to be quite intense for the second axis or vertical. Now, the reason they call it first and second is because you can make it horizontal, vertical. It's not horizontal, vertical. It could be different angles. So therefore it makes no sense to call it that. So they've just gone for first and second, which is reasonably sensible. And you can modify the divisions for that one as well. For you can make it different and much, much more. Now, I'm not going to go for 20. That makes it too hard to look at for too long. But I'm going to go for 200. But you can see you can also create divisions. So maybe go for 10. And you can see you've got another 
different design there. What you can also do, you notice, you've got gutter. And gutter is great because what you can do, you can enter something like 30. And obviously you can, they're different because obviously you've got different settings, they're not linked. It's a pity you can't put a link in between the two, but however, 30 and 30. So you can just quickly edit that. Just put 30 and 30 in both. And you can see what you get, this grid, you've got a gutter between them. And it's just nice, just a margin, a space that's, uh, what do you want to call it? A gutter. However, most time I don't normally use that, but I just, I wanted to point it out, you can use it to create different designs. In fact, I very rarely use gutter. More useful in books, I suppose, and those sort of things. But if you're just doing a, a grid, I'm not so certain on screen that gutter is of any use for, sort of for images and things particularly. However, once you've got that, I'm going to go put divisions down to one, divisions down to one, because I don't want them anymore. What you can also do is fixed aspect ratio. Now that's quite a useful one, right? It's tucked away there, it's the third item. Just click that. And well, what that does is means that you don't have to fiddle around with these settings because it does link it. So it's all sort of in harmony. So it's nice like two. So you can see that it changes based on that. So if that's three, it makes that. So instead of that, that's going to be 600. So instead of typing 600, you just type three. Or you can type 0 0.5. So you can see it goes the other way. Or 0 0.1. So again, every time you vary this, so maybe make that 100, you can see it makes more intense the other way. Or 300. So it's, it's quite a useful thing, I think, aspect ratio. Now I'm just going to put it back to one, but you can use that. And deselect that now and enable that. However, now let's go to one of the other ones, isometric. And you isometric, you'll notice it suddenly goes angled. You've got an angle this time, that angle kicks in and you've got, you've got the same sort of things. You've got space and division, you've got gutter, you've got, so you can put gutter in again, 20. Now, when you change from one to the next, you go back to standard. Sometimes it keeps the gutter, sometimes it doesn't. But if you go to something that doesn't have a gutter, and there's some that for some weird reason, I don't know the reason why, they don't have gutter. The gutter is lost, that value is lost. Just be aware of that. So you've got here, isometric. You can't access the angle. You've got 150, 90, I just about make those out. 30, they're obviously faded. But you run through these and you can go here to that one. And you can see as you do that, they change the angles. So that's really, that's all that's changing is the angle. Trimetric, right? Now I, I must admit, not certain all these terms. I'm certain they are well-known terms for things, horizontal triangular, and you can create some very interesting things just by doing different things. It's, I think it's quite nice. Great selection. However, more useful maybe, to access custom. And now you can see you can access the angle. And again, you've got here, change this. Just run through that and you can change the angle. Change the angle of that one and change the angle of that one and you can see it just will move around like that. So it's, that's really quite nice. So at least you can access it via that. It's a pity that they just don't act, allow you to access the angle anyway for all of them. It doesn't make sense to me why you just can't just, you know, override it. Now, in some cases, you can override this. You can double click on it and it will enter the value. Should do. Sometimes it just ignores and just will just let me just rotate it and constrain. But it, you should be able to override it and put in a different value there. So that's quite good angle as well. And again, you've got here the final one, triangle custom. Now triangle custom doesn't particularly, just gives you a triangular design. And again, you can manipulate this and see there. And some it will indicate, it will mark, it will pop up and say, no, that's not gonna be a very good triangle custom, which is very true. Up access, not so accessible, but still some of these I think do access that. However, you've also got this. I have never used this, so I'm just going to admit complete ignorance of working on this, constraining, add for snapping, etc. It's, you may want to investigate yourself on that, but that area I haven't done, so I'm not going to discuss that. And cube, and then you've got this interesting cube one. Well, this one uh, is quite uh, even more interesting, and I probably could spend a video going through showing all the different settings. You've got the scale, here, so let's just change that, maybe make that 100. You can set it obviously to 100. 
there. Maybe make it 200 and you can see what happens. It obviously increases doubles. And again, actually I haven't tried it. Let's put this in, times five. Yes, you can enter again mathematical in there. Just if you want, make it 500 as well. Divisions again, you can do exactly the same. Exactly the same as before. You've still got exactly the same here. So you can increase, decrease, etc. Now in this case, it does seem that the divisions, even though it indicates divisions, doesn't actually show it. Now maybe there's, no. For some weird reason that doesn't allow that. And sometimes when you use these things, some of these grids, there's some things that obviously that it works on that it just doesn't allow. But that does seem to be odd because I've set that, set that, and you think, but you can modify it and you can see you can change it around interactively as well. And you might like that grid, might find use. Personally, I'm just as happy using the advanced and going through and setting all these things myself. And again, you've got all these access, various angles, constraining, etc. Well, there's a load of other ones as well that suddenly add for constraining. You could probably get to the point where you utterly confuse yourself. I certainly confuse myself when I use some of these things. So now you've got your grid, what can you do with it? Well, you can keep this open, the grid manager, if you want to, or you can close it. Just go over here and close, and you can bring it, bring it up at any time later. Just go to View and Grid Access Manager, and it'll be exactly the same settings. You can use shapes. You can also use yeah, like the pen tool. Just go to the pen tool. I'm going to use pen tool as an example. Well, also, you need snapping to be on. So go to View and down to Snapping Manager. You can see there, Snapping Manager. Make certain that's on. If you don't enable it, turn that off. And of course, as you do that, you can see you can hover over there and nothing will snap. If you put that on, then you will actually get some snapping. Snap to grid. That's another one as well. Make certain that's on. Click close. And then I can quickly go. Then you can see as it go over there, you can see it's red. Then it suddenly changes color. Click. I can click and add there. And I can go there. And I can add there. And so on. You can see the sort of thing I can do with that. And you can just add, say, other one there. And you can see there, and you can click up there, click there, click there, and click there, click there, and then go, let's set again, slightly different color, and so on, so on. You can see the sort of designs you can create using this approach. And again, of course, you can finish it off. Let's just finish it off quickly, like that. And just change it maybe to a different color. And you can see the design there. So that's, Grid Manager, and also the Snapping Manager as well. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.